Good morning, good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions with Pastor Sutton on this Saturday, August 5th. I got like 17 different things going on and showing up in my head. I got a town board planning meeting coming up on Monday, with Monday evening, which I was supposed to have written up. Uh, we're, we're, I'm on the town's land use planning commission. And I voluntold, volunteered to write up the first section of the land use plan based on information we already had. And it's kind of just summary material, but I've been kind of neglecting it. And so I woke up at 5 o'clock this morning with some ideas in my head and got out all the materials and started writing. And then, you know, you're doing this, so then this shows up. And, well, I got this email I got to send, and then I'm, I want to write this down so I don't forget to do that. And then there's this thing over here. Oh, yeah, I should do devotions today, too. I should start my day with devotion. So I should have just at five o'clock just gotten up and done this and said, well, you know, when you're here, you're here. But good morning. Glad you are here with us on this Saturday morning to spend a little time together in God's word. The Senate assembly is over. I am been watching the results of it over the last few days. I've watched Sunday afternoon and Monday morning and Monday afternoon and all day Tuesday. I started, I started Wednesday morning today. And, you know, there's some things that just get contentious. And um, one of the things right now that's a, a contention amongst uh, many of the brothers is pastoral formation. Um, what is the route to ministry? How do we get about, how do we, what? How do we come about having pastors? What makes a pastor? And there's, I, you know, and I got a, 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 I think that a seminary education, well, even, even in Assembly of the Synod said that seminary education is the gold standard. Um, you know, there's, there's this American Christianity concept out there that, that a pastor is just a guy who's gone to Bible college and, and he knows how to speak well. And, uh, you know, you, you can, you can give a past, you, you can take a man and give him some practical instructions, um, online lectures or something like that and, and come out with a pastor. Um, you can come out with a church leader that way, um, a worship leader, maybe, uh, but you won't come out with a pastor. A pastor takes is more than just a collection of technical skills. Um, and, and a pastor is really formed by, uh, f there's a formational process. The, uh, a professor who's passed away but is um, widely regarded as a good instructor, a, 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 I don't know how I want to say it right now, um, but but Reverend Dr. Mark, Kurt Marquardt said that the seminary is a crucible, right? Uh, and you, you, you put a man in there and you throw in the scriptures and you throw in the instruction and you throw in his, his brother seminarians and, and you heat that thing up. Um, like making an alloy. Um, and what comes out is more than just a man given a group of technical skills, but a, but a heart um, and a spirit uh, that is necessary for ministry. Because we have a shortage of pastors, for one, and two, because there's so many, and I think they're self-created. I think the congregations create them for themselves. But financial constraints in supporting a pastor uh, properly, and right now health insurance is a huge issue. That's a that's a whole can of worms in itself. I know my for myself for my congregations, um, uh, the 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 
health care, the insurance portion of it, is is a hardship for them. And uh, it, it, I'm making, what they're paying for my health care is almost as much as what my salary is, um, which is crazy. Well, thank you, Affordable Health Care Act. But anyway, um, but because of these things, people are saying, well, we got to come up with other ways to make pastors. You know, let's shortcut it. Um, let's 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 make it easier to become a pastor. But I really think that I, I, I truly believe and I, and I say it, I posted it on Facebook today when in a discussion and, and I've said it before that if a man wants to be a pastor, there are other ways to become a pastor. God works in the ways that he wishes to work. But the best way is to, you know, if you're young to go to seminary, if you're older to sell everything you have and follow Christ. Um, because the, the tribulation of doing that will ultimately give you strength in, in, um, in, in, in being a shepherd to the people. And a pastor's, you know, a pastor's not the highest guy in the church. He's the bottom. He's the servant. He's upholding stuff. Well, anyway, all right, I'm going to, Never mind. I, my mind, like I said, I'm, I'm all over the place this morning. So let's let's just get into who's here. What was my first word in the comments today? Focus. So let's just get down to this because I got I got a week and a half's worth of work to do this week. All right, uh, Jerry. Good morning. You were the first one in this morning. Glad to see you here. Uh, it, uh, oops, I hit refresh. Uh, well, and then it's doing that, and it's doing that, and okay. Uh, back to the top. There we go. Okay, so Jerry, sunny and warm. Okay. I don't know. We're in the 60s here, but the humidity's high, but it it's not supposed to rain. It it's not in the forecast, but it looks ugly out there. But it doesn't feel like no, Bonnie says it doesn't feel muggy out. I haven't been outside yet, so I don't know. She took she took the dog out. Um, as soon as I'm done with you guys, I'm going out, though, because I'm going to relocate the camper. I, I finally pulled it out from behind the garage, and now it's out in front. I'm going to move it over in the yard because we're so dry because I want to wash it. And uh, because we're so dry, I'd like to um, let that water not fall on gravel, but fall on the grass where in the trees where it's needed. Kathy, good morning. I'm going to be out of coffee again. Good morning to you. Jeannie and Bob, good morning to you guys. Garden is all picked for now. All right. Uh, so you've been out in the garden already, Jeannie. Our tomato plants are huge. I've got, we, we've got four tomato plants and a pepper plant and five gallon pails. And I have been watering them because it's so dry. Uh, watering almost daily, sometimes twice a day. Fertilizing every week and a half. Um, but one of our cherry tomatoes has got to be four and a half feet tall. Um, and I would bet you there's every, every branch is blossomed out and it's just, they're just crazy. You know, I was, I was thinking if we had a, a foot and a half, two foot tall, uh, bush for cherry tomatoes, we'd be doing pretty good. But this thing is, like I say, it's, it's with the pail, it's almost as tall as I am. So, Geraldine and Neil, good morning to you guys. Verna, hello. Jill and John, good morning up there in Rhinelander. Leela, good morning to you. There is Bonnie coming in, telling us it's 62 here. Laundry and recycling today. Yeah, that's uh, laundry. Ongoing battle. And Deb and Ann and Grant, good morning to you guys and everyone else who's watching. Hello, hello. I'm glad you're here with us. To those watching now, later, Facebook, YouTube, whatever you have there, hello. Let's uh, let's quit messing around here and get into this. If you have the Lutheran Service Book, page 295, daily prayer for individuals and families, the morning order. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. 
Amen. Our psalm today, our psalm today, fit with our hymn, psalm of praise, um, Psalm 111 through 118 are uh, psalms of praise, um, the, the Alleluia psalms, um, where the, the, the upright are gathered to give praise. I'm cold in here right now. Bonnie turned the air conditioning up a little bit. I should have gotten a sweatshirt. Um, psalms 111 through 118 are... Our, our psalms of praise to the Lord. Our hymn today was pray, uh, praise, uh, praise our Lord or uh, whatever. Um, you can look and see what it was. I don't. 617 in the hymnal. Um, but songs of praise. And, and uh, I think it fits with everything because we're going to be coming to the close of Paul's letter here too. But Psalm 111 verses 1 through 10. That's the whole psalm, by the way. And so, praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused all... Oops, lost my spot. Uh, full of splendor, majesty, his work, and his righteousness endure for. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the inheritance of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Amen. Oh, glory be to the Father and to the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. We start with praise the Lord and we end with his praise endures forever, with, for which, which it truly does. And the, those who fear the Lord, uh, who practice the fear of the Lord, have good understanding. That is the beginning of wisdom. I think that's why seminary education is residential is the best way to go, because you want to learn the fear of the Lord. <laughs> Pick up your family and travel to a seminary and live there for four years, having given up everything that you had where you were. Anyway, see, I'm going to get tangented here left and right. Our reading today, uh, Romans chapter 16, and I, I decided as I was doing this, I looked, I looked over the reading. I had, I had broken this up into three days. I was going to do uh, a day of the, of the, well, the way the the way the uh, ESV breaks it down, the English Standard Version, uh, 1 through 16 is all greetings, which it is. It's all personal greetings. So there's really um, not a lot of content there. Um, 17 through 23 are uh, Paul's final instructions to Rome and, and final greetings. Um and then 25 through 27 is a is a doxological closing, um, and and I said you know, I thought to myself you know yeah if I break this down I'm going to be struggling so we're going to be done with Romans today which means we got to figure out what to do on Monday uh, so if you have suggestions of what you'd like to see comment here whether it's here or over on YouTube later today leave comments as to which book you'd like to go to. We'll keep doing this. We'll do another book. Um, and don't, don't just tell me a New Testament book or an Old Testament book. Uh, give me an idea what you, what you want to look at, um, maybe even why, all right? If you don't choose, I will. Um, don't worry. We'll, we'll have something on Monday one way or the other. I might figure it out at 8.15 when we're starting at 8.25, but we'll have something. So Romans chapter 16. Oh, Look at this, I put, I even put up what I had, no, 1 through 27, that's right. Yep, that's the end of it, okay. All right, Romans, all of chapter 16, are you ready? So, Paul says, 
I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a servant of the church at... Oh, yeah, that's easy for you to say. Uh, Sancria. Yeah, we'll go with that. Sancria. That you may welcome her in the Lord in a way worthy of the saints to and help her in whatever she may need from you. For she has been a patron of many and of myself as well. Greet Prissa and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who risk their necks for my life, to whom not only I give thanks, but all the churches of the Gentiles give thanks as well. Greet also the church in their house. Greet my beloved uh, Epinatus, who was the first to convert to Christ in Asia. Greet Mary, who has worked hard for you. Greet Andricus, uh, Andronicus and uh, Junia, my kinsmen and fellow prisoners. They are well known to the apostles and were in Christ before me. Greet Ampliatus, Ampliatus, my beloved in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our fellow worker in Christ, and my beloved uh, Stachys. Greet Apollos, who is approved in Christ. Greet those who belong to the family of Aristobulus. Greet my kinsman Herodian. Greet those in the Lord who belong to the family of Narcissus. Greet those workers in the Lord, Tryphenia and Tryphosa. Greet the beloved Perses, who worked hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord. Also his mother, who has been a mother to me as well. Greet Asyncritus, Phlegion, Hermes, Petrobus, Hermas, and the brothers who are with them. Greet Philolog Phil Philologus, Julia, Nereus, and his sister, and Olympus, uh, and all the saints who are with him. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All, all the churches of Christ greet you. I appeal you to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause division and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. Avoid them. For such persons do not serve our Lord Christ with their own appetites, and by smooth talk and flattery they deceive the hearts of the naive. For your obedience is known to all, so that I rejoice over you. But I want you to be wise as to what is good and, and innocent as to what is evil. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Timothy, my fellow worker, greets you. So do uh, Lucius and Jason and Sosipater, my kinsmen. I, Tertius, who wrote this letter, greet you in the Lord. Gaius, who is host to me in the whole church, greets you. Erastus, the city treasurer, and our brother, Quartus, greet you. Now, to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Christ Jesus, according to the revelation of the mystery that has been that was kept secret for long ages, but has now been disclosed, and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God be glory forever among through Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so ends Paul's letter. Um, what shall we say then? Well, there's all these people that Paul sends personal greetings to, right? Um, I can just imagine, you know, um, if I were to sit down and write a group of people a letter and then, you know, I'd be, oh, yeah, and say hi to so-and-so and, you know, greet the folks, let them know how it's going bad, watch out for the deer, you know. <laughs> Being a Wisconsin kid, that's kind of how it is. Um, so his commendation of Phoebe is, is, a, is a letter of introduction, right? Um, she's probably, it's probably Phoebe uh, who carried the letter to Rome. That's why the the commendation and the introduction is there. Um, um, yeah. Um, 
And so she was a servant, a deaconess, in the church at uh, Sincrea. And, uh, oh, okay, so that's Acts 18. Um, uh, come on now. Oh, why'd you do that? Um, yeah, Paul returns to Antioch and stayed many days longer and took leave of the brothers and set sail for Syria, uh, Syria with him Priscilla and Aquila. At uh, Sancria, he had cut his hair for he was under a vow. So it's at Sancria um, that he was he was under a vow. Um, I, I, the, the common practice is, is uh, to shave your head um, when you're under a vow. Um, so greet Phoebe, um, welcome her, and, uh, and, and care for her and give her whatever she needs, and she will be of help to you as she was to me. And then uh, Prissa and Aquila. Um, why? Yeah, I, I don't know why. Yeah, Pri he, he writes Pris Prissa here, but it's Priscilla. It's the same. It must be just a different way of saying the same name. Um, but they were fellow workers in Christ. I want to say that Priscilla and Aquila are the ones that owned a tent-making business that Paul worked with or for um, uh, when he was there. Uh, yeah, a, a tent maker. Yeah, Pris Priscilla and Aquila are, are, are tent makers um, uh, and, and supporters of, of Paul when he was there. So all of these, um, and they rest, risked their necks. Yeah, one of the, they were in one of the towns where it was trouble. You know, and if you got a troublemaker, he's working for you. You're going to be blamed for it. Um, See so, what? Okay, but so so you've got all of this, uh, all of these people he's greeting. Um, greet the brothers, greet the church, greet, greet the kinsmen, uh, greet my my fellow prisoners, those who were. Uh, uh, let's see here, Colossians 4.10, uh, Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, greets you, and Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, concerning whom you've received instructions, he welcomes you, uh, that was in Colossians, and Philemon, uh, Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends greetings to you in Philemon, right, so there's, there's just all of these people that Paul has met in his missionary journeys that are in these different churches that are, that are in Rome, uh, or areas, and of course, this letter is going to be copied and sent out to other churches too. So, um, greet one another with a holy kiss. There was a, there's an old practice uh, in the church to greet, greet your brothers and sisters in Christ with a with a holy kiss, a common way of sharing the peace in the Lord uh, in that culture. Um, you know, you can't you can't kiss a person who you hate, can you? Um, you might hate to kiss a person, but uh, to be that intimate with them is to be um, uh, to be truly at peace with them. Uh, and so, uh, you know, so Paul sends all these all the churches of Christ. Well, there's well, there's one church. It's plural. All the churches. Well, there is only one church in the body of Christ. These are the local congregations. Uh, so he greets uh, in the study Bible. He'll here tells me there's 26 people. All together, that he that he greets um, those who have, are laboring uh, in Christ with Paul and serve ex as examples for us and role models. Um, then he switches over to these final instructions. Um, avoid those who I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause division and create obstacles. Right, um, those who who from within and, and Judaizers are typically the the ones he's warning against here, the ones who um, who want to bring in uh, the law as an additional piece uh, to the faith. That's what all of the book of Galatians is about, where Judaizers have gone in and 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 uh, uh, told the people that, yeah, it's all well and good to have Jesus, but first you have to be circumcised and under the covenant, and then and then you. Can, but don't let don't let any false teachings come in, right? Uh, whether you whether you worship. Uh, the Lord, uh, one day doesn't matter from the other. One food doesn't matter from the other. But serve your brother and and be kind. Um, but these these who uh, these who do these things are serving their own desires, their own needs, their own appetites, and 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 not uh, not not the work of of Christ ongoing in the world. Um, 
what is this? Uh, um, Polycarp. Polycarp, who was a, a disciple of John, writes, let us be zealous in the pursuit of that which is good and keep ourselves from causing offense from false brethren and from those who in hypocrisy bear the name of the Lord and draw away vain men into, into errors. And so avoid them, as, as Paul teaches in the, in the Galatians. Um, their appetites, their sinful human desires, and their smooth talk and flattery are, are um, evidence of, of who they are and how unlike Paul they are. Um, and so he says, so he says the God of all peace will soon crush Satan under your feet, the, the promise of the, of the return of Christ. And he is, he is doing it even, even, as he, even as he says it. You know, he's pointing back to the, the proto-gospel in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, where the seed of the woman will cush, come to crush the head of the serpent. And that has been done on the cross. And so, um, so this grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Um, then a few quick greetings. Timothy says hi. <laughs> oh, oh, by the way, Tim's here with me. He says hi, and 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 Lucius and Jason and Sosapat are they're they're here with me too. And then now, this last one. This may be confusing to some, but verse twenty-two. I, uh, Tertius, who wrote this letter, uh, greet you in the Lord. Uh, again, uh, you didn't write letters. Y you spoke them. And that's the great thing about Paul's stuff. It's really for oration. He's really speaking it. And a scribe is writing it down. And Tertius is the, is the scribe here. So Paul dictated the letter. And um, uh, Tertius was the one whose, whose hand was actually scribing it out. Um, and then a few greetings from the people in the, in the town, Gaius and Erastus and uh, courteous and so you get all these you get all these greetings in the midst of this and then finally Paul winds down the entire letter by saying him who is able to give you strength right who is our heavenly father according to my gospel the gospel of Christ Jesus that he preaches according to the revealing of this mystery that was kept kept uh, secretly you know, in the Old Testament scriptures, but has now been revealed in those same scriptures, made known to all nations, to everybody of every creed and language and place, uh, according to the command of God, uh, bringing about the obedience of faith. And that, that obedience of faith is, is what we have um, by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the sanctification that comes from our justification. And so, to the only wise God, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The only wise God be glory forever and ever, forevermore through Christ Jesus. Amen. So that's that's how he ends it. Um, what is this thing here? Uh, verses 21 to 23. Oh, this business of Timothy and Tertius and Gaius and so on um, give evidence that... Um, Paul was in Corinth when he wrote Romans and stayed there for uh, months towards the end of his third journey on his way to, back to Jerusalem. Um, so they're, they're placing, this, this, this signature places Paul in Corinth is kind of what the, uh, what the study Bible wants to say. I think that's right. I don't, I don't think he was in prison yet. Um, uh, yeah. So that's the end of our text. I, you know, uh, quite often I try to wrap this back around the gospel. What, but what can I give you? Um, Paul's letter, right? Uh, go read it again. Now that you've heard it piece by piece over the last, I don't know, how many days have we been on this? I think since the beginning of, of uh, July. I think it was, it was early in July that we started. It might have been back in June even that we started this. But we've gone through all 16 chap chapters of of St. Paul's letter to the Romans uh, in sort of a devotional Bible study kind of way. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll continue to do that with a, with a, a new book starting uh, next week. Hey, there's, there's, uh, there's Connie tuning in and Robin. Hi, guys. Glad to see you here. I hope Robin's still on the mend. Let's uh, let's finish out our day here with, with uh, confession and prayer as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father, almighty maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the glory, and the power, forever and ever. Amen. I had that out of order, didn't I? For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Yeah. Amen. Uh, for ourselves and others on this Saturday morning, Lord of our rest, thank you for this Saturday, a day of repose. This day invites us to celebrate the work of this week, to rest our bodies, our minds, and our spirits, relaxing and entertaining ourselves as we see fit. Thank you for the work that we have accomplished and the work that we have yet to complete. Forgive me if I was negligent, so that I do not carry my guilt into the coming week. Cleanse my heart of the burden that it carries so that this day may be of repose and celebration. Thank you for this Saturday, a day blessed and sanctified so that we can remember how necessary it is to rest. May I think about you, creator of this Saturday, so that I dedicate myself to the enjoyment of all that has been created and produced with a thankful heart. In the name of Christ, who rested on this day in the tomb, to rise with joy and power to new life on the new day. In his name, amen. We pray also this day for those who, for whom death draws near, especially Ron and Bob. We pray for those who are recovering, uh, in whether it be from surgery or illness, or those who are simply in need of, of strength and comfort, especially Robin, Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Mike, Megan, Tim, Dan, Ezra, Jeremy, Ashley, Holden, Cheryl, Gail, Dawn, and all those who call upon your most holy name. Hear them for the sake of and in the promise of Christ, who is our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things. In this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end. That our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. That brings us to a close on this day, my friends. God's peace be with you. We'll see you back here Monday morning, Monday morning, 825. In the meantime, tomorrow, you know it. Go to church, receive God's gifts, believe in him, be comforted and strengthened, reassured and forgiven to live life in Christ Jesus. To the only wise God be glory forevermore through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. God's peace. See you Monday.